Hey everybody, welcome back to Motion UX. Today we're gonna to be looking at how to create a high fidelity prototype in Figma using some variants and pulling in some GIFs from After Effects. So let's check it out. Here we are inside of Figma and I have this little gift quiz here um, that you'll go through and be able to select different options, hit show GIFs, and then a little celebration here happening at the end. And currently it's just all static screens and so we wanna leverage uh, some components, some variants, some GIFs to make this uh, concept really come to life. The first thing we're going to do is take this button here and turn it into an interactive component using variants. And so if I duplicate that over here and we go ahead and right click it and go down to create component, we now have this as a component. Within it now we can actually create a variant. So if I hit this plus right here, we can see that we now have a variant. And currently both of them are identical, so there's no differences between them. But what we can actually do is let's create maybe a little hover effect. And when we actually hover over this thing, I want this little gift to open up just a little bit. Very, very subtle. So what we can actually do is add some interactivity here. So if I click this while I'm in the prototyping mode and do while hovering, it will do a smart animate. And so it will just animate directly to this. And we'll do some custom easing to make it happen really snappy, change the timing to 150. That's what that will be. So when we hover, it will go to here. And then when we uh, are all done hovering, it will smart animate back. And let's actually change this to mouse enter. And then when the mouse leaves, it will go back to this initial one. Let's go ahead and use this component. We'll replace this one right here. So now if we actually hover, we can see that within one frame, we are having some interactivity happening here. If we go back to here, we can actually then go back into prototype mode and say when we click it, it will then proceed to the next frame. So the next piece of interactivity we want to add is selecting the actual answers in this quiz. So currently all of these options are designed the same way and we want to actually componentize this to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to duplicate that right down here and we're going to make this into a component as well. So if we go ahead and right click it, create component, we can create a variant and this variant will have maybe a thicker and highlighted stroke. And so if we increase the stroke a little bit, change this to like a a light blue. We can say when we click it, it will change to this. And if we click it again, it will change back to that. So let's actually do that in the prototyping mode. We'll go ahead and do a drag down on click. It smarts animates to that. If we click it again, it will smart animate back to the unselected state. It would be a good idea to go ahead and name these. We can keep this first one to be default and we can do the second one to be selected. And if I actually go ahead and create an instance of that component, you can see in this property, drop down that I have now, I can change it from default and selected. And so essentially in this prototype that we set up for this interactive component, we are just changing the state of this component through a smart anime. What we want to do is we actually want all of these to reflect what we have going on here. And so what we'll do is I will duplicate this and just pop it in right up here because this is inside of a smart uh, frame so we'll make sure that we have all of those things there we can just drag these things outside so that we're preserving what the actual text was and then we can go in here and we can duplicate it to have four and we can just go ahead and copy over that text you can change the text but still be part of that same component instance which is fantastic instead of doing it manually like we just did of copy and pasting and duplicating all of these instances of the component we can actually use a plugin called master to automate a lot of that for us. So let's take a look. If we use master and we say, let's uh, pick a target component. So that's now our target component. We can then select all of these and going to master again, do link objects to the target component. So now if we take a look at this, these have all been changed to be linked to this master component because the design and the, because the attributes of these layers were identical to what we started off with, it just saw those similarities and linked everything up. And so now I can actually go into here and I can say, change this property to selected or change it to default. So jumping into the prototype, now we actually are able to select and deselect as many combinations of answers that we possibly could have. And so this really gives this prototype more uh, life and it feels more realistic to interact with it. So whether you're doing user testing or just kind of proving a concept out uh, for yourself, this allows it to feel a lot more realistic as you're clicking through everything. And this is only happening on a single frame. And so it used to be that you would have to have multiple frames for every single a specific combination of answers, but now you can do all of that dynamically using variants. So at the end, we wanna have this little celebration here. And so what I actually did um, is use the pencil tool to draw a bunch of these 
um, little swirls and these little accent marks. So after creating these vectors in Figma, I took them into After Effects, did a quick trim path animation, exported it through GIF Gun, and now I have the same size layer just as a GIF and animated here inside of Figma. And if we actually go here, we can play what that is going to look like. Um, and a great thing about GIFs, when you have them here, they obviously they show up static as just like an image, but you can actually select what you want the start, what you want that static frame to look like. And so by default, when you load it in, it will be blank. And that's not very helpful for you as a designer or other folks jumping into the design to actually know what is happening. And so usually I'll change it to the end state or something in between so that it's a little bit more obvious of what this image or this GIF is representing. So we have this little hover animation here. And every time we progress in a from one screen to the next. You can see that the background here is filled with all of these little shapes that subtly move throughout every single screen. And so that just brings a little bit more life as we're going from screen to screen, the background is kind of changing and auto animating with things. And so now I'm able to select as many of these that I want to go to the next question, select some more and show my GIF. And so you can see that the GIF of this trim path animation happens here. And so that adds a little bit of celebration to the overall flow. Understanding components and variants and how you can add a little bit more realistic interactivity and motion and animation to your prototypes will allow you to create more realistic concepts to be able to have better user testing and just proving your concepts as you are designing your experiences. Catch you all next time. Thank you.